Welcome to Mapperton, our family home and estate in Dorset in the southwest of England. Julie and I took over running Mapperton a few years ago from my parents, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich. It's a lot of work, but also a lot of fun. This place is full of fascinating stories, extraordinary people, and endless repairs. So please join our family on this journey of a lifetime as we put all our efforts into preserving this magnificent part of England's heritage. Hi everybody and welcome to our very, very first episode here at Mapperton Live. Pippa has decided to join us as well. And, and I, it's, ki it's quite wonderful that we have Pippa here because Pippa wasn't here a year ago. Um, was when Pippa not here a year No, ago? when things no, all... Pippa is only one. That's right, when That's things all changed for us. So we are a year on from lockdown, from when we first started lockdown. And when things really started to change here as far as what are we going to do now that visitors can't come, um, now that everything's been shut. Well, and well, last, this time a year ago, we had this crazy idea that because we couldn't have physical visitors, we'd start to try and do virtual visitors. So we went on live. Yes. On live it, online. Even. Right. <laughs> and crossed our fingers. And, and some of you came. And some of you came and, and watched these programs, mostly with Julie. I was behind the camera because um, we didn't have any help at that point. No, nope, we weren't we had, allowed. And we had my mum and you and my dad. And there were episodes like romping through the bedrooms and yep. touring the church and all kinds of behind the scenes stuff. So you might have seen those and some of you might not have, but you're going to see a lot more of those type of episodes and really kind of, as we like to call, backstage at Britain's finest manor house. So we want to just tell you a little bit about kind of the in the beginning when we first, well, when I first saw this place as the American and kind of how I've been able to really take it on the, you know, I think I've take it on. Do, yeah. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a lot to take on. <laughs> and um, projects that we're looking forward to doing in the future. Yeah. So this, as Julie says, this is the very first episode of, of Maps and Live. Um, and we're welcoming you all here today. The truth is, it's quite cold. So I thought we might want to go into the kitchen yep. where it's a bit warmer and have a cup of tea. Yep. By the, yeah. By the Aga, which I didn't know anything about Agas, by the way. You when Agas? No, not until I moved here. Now, now, you can now I Agas. love Agas. Now I'm like, oh my gosh, how can you live without an Aga <laughs> in this house <laughs> or in this well, country? It's definitely a lot warmer in here. Oh. And a lot warmer since we put the, um, the biomass heating system into the place. Yeah, he'll say a lot warmer. So, so here, come on, you can Yeah, the, he'll say a lot the warmer, but... Radiating. The American in me is still a little bit cold, still a little bit cold. So let's get by the Aga. Right, so we're into the back of the house, coming through here. Um, this is one bit we still haven't painted. It's already kind of garish yellow. Yeah, it's, um, it is. But oh, can we just focus on that since we are going through the back of the house? I love this. So this is the old um, bell system. Is that what you would call it? Yeah. And right. it still works. What? So, so somebody rings a bell from number one bedroom or the chapel room. Really? Um, it still goes. There's unfortunately no butler bringing your tea up anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry. oh you could bring it up for I me. Could bring, well, he I could bring me up the tea. Yeah, there you go. We're calling people for supper, you see. <laughs> yes, right. Instead of that, we now, we now have the gong. It's true. That works really well. That gets the kids down. I think that was pre the bell system. So first it was the gong, then the bell system, and now it's just shouting. Right, <laughs> this is true. This is definitely warm. Okay, this, this is why I love, I, I mean, I live in here because I love this aga. Well, the, the aga is, is about 50 years old, I think. And the amazing thing about agas is they haven't changed at all. So if you buy an aga today, there's almost nothing that is different about it. Right, and... What I didn't know also about, well, the Aga and, and it being on 24-7 is if you can look up above me, we've got some 
bed sheets hanging there because, <laughs> which I at first was like, this is strange. Why am I walking into the kitchen and there's like a laundry line above me? But it makes sense now. Well, this house didn't have a tumble dryer until about four years ago. Everything was dried above. Every time you have a new generation taking over a historic house, they're going to come up with their own plans. Mm -hmm. um, and those plans are going to be based on things that they want to do. And I suppose critically things that tie in with their expertise and experience. Yeah. So I'd had another career working as an entrepreneur, running a film school, a production company, etc. You'd been helping me with, with that as well. Um, but coming down here, I think we realized that there were really three things initially that we needed to do. Yeah, right when we took it over. The first was we wanted to get more visitors, so more people to come and see the house and gardens. The second was we wanted more weddings because yeah. weddings have been an incredibly helpful way to build income to support all the costs that we have here. And the third linked to you. Mm -hmm. This is where I finally come in. Which was, <laughs> which was to get the place set up so that we could host yoga so, retreats. Yoga, yoga retreats. retreats, exactly. So, so I think for me, coming in, you know, as the American and really not knowing any of this history, marrying into this family and then not knowing any of this history and then taking on this big historic house, Britain's finest manor house, I really had to start to get my head around it, but I also felt like I wanted to to make sure that something of me was involved in something of sort of here, the Montague Sandwich family. And that's where the yoga retreats came in. So we really did think about this, like how can we have people come and stay here? And we thought yoga retreats because it's not like when we come and have yoga retreats, there's huge parties here. So they would be very responsible, looking after the house at the same time, um, having a lovely time enjoying the house and gardens, but we had to, we had to take mm. many of the bedrooms and upgrade them to the 21st century. <laughs> well, but it, but it was more than that, wasn't it? I mean, there were, the, there were all the bedrooms that we needed to make comfortable for people to come to stay. Mm -hmm. Many of the bedrooms didn't have bathrooms, and I think when people come to stay for a yoga retreat, they quite understand yes. we need bathrooms, so we, we put in a lot of bathrooms. We put in a complete new hot and cold water system, which involved pulling up all the pipe work which was an extraordinary amount of work um, and really quite scary because of all the leaks that we had in the process. Yep. We're going to talk more about leaks because that's a bit of a recurring theme yes. at Mapperton. Um, there seems to be no end to those things. No. Um, but, um, but along with that, we had to have a space where you can actually teach yoga. Mm -hmm. And it so happened that we've got this wonderful big stable block called the South Stable Block, which used to be quite a small tea room but it's been a perfect, much bigger event space in which we can have weddings, yoga, yoga yeah. I mean, events. Events, everything. But going back to the, to the things that we did, so, um, so we converted the, the South State yeah. block. We put in new bedrooms and bathrooms here. Mm -hmm. But the other point was, you know, this is a home. This is somewhere yeah. where we need to live and we need to be able to have our children here, we need to be able to have friends, it needs to be comfortable and warm. And I think we also took a decision not to live full time in the front of the house because often that was going to be open to the public. Yeah. And so we needed to make the back of the house uh, comfy and, um, uh, and a fun place to be. Yeah. And we kicked off with the kitchen. So the kitchen is completely different really, I think, to how it was before. Yeah. We put in um, completely new cabinets. The Arga is exactly the same because that lasts forever. Um, we did a bit of repainting. Yeah, and people will ask, just so I know, because I know, I bet some of you are going to ask. So can you explain, though, Luke, the aga here, this is really where the old hearth, obviously the fire, this is where before sort of electricity or oil or anything like that, this is where the, this is, yes. was the kitchen. So but this, this would have been the Tudor kitchen. I mean, one of the amazing things that my parents did um, was to restore the floor here as well. This was all lino, and they pulled it up and it was covered in glue, black glue, holding these, this lino. And every little bit had to be painstakingly taken out and they've restored it so that you've got this wonderful flagstone floor. And this is the big, would have been the big Tudor fireplace. In fact, when this, when my parents initially renovated this, um, the poor chap, I think it was the builder, who was supposed to be finding out what was going on, he, um, he touched one of the boards up in there 
and the whole thing collapsed with centuries of birds' nests and bird poo and all the nasty stuff that fell down the chimney is completely covered. Oh dear. Um, luckily, that didn't happen to us. No. In fact, there are lots of things that my parents did, which, thank heavens, we, we haven't had to do because of that. One thing, of course, that they continue to do is look after the gardens. Yeah. Um, and, um, and we're really grateful to my mum for Very doing good. that because that's yeah, you know, that's and a huge, and she's huge been job. able. Both uh, my in-laws, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich, have been really taken me under their wing, if you like, and have definitely helped me as far as up my knowledge in the Montague family. But one of the things I think for me is finding out about the historical figures of the Montague family. There's so many of them. And yes, there's the famous one, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Everybody knows he's the one that the sandwich was named after. But for me personally, Alberta Sturgis, who was the ninth Countess of Sandwich, was an American. So she came over as an American heiress during the Gilded Age. And so during that period of 1870 and 1910, there was that Gilded Age and she came over, married your great grandfather, uh, George, and um, you know, and she also came from Chicago. So I've been a little bit obsessed about Alberta because she also saved every letter that she wrote to her family back in the states. Um, every letter that she received, she saved, and it, she's and so we're still trying to get through all of that. But Alberta is somebody that I definitely want to continue because I've only just barely touched on her. She's left so much of her mark here. I want to continue to to embrace that and create something more of a memory around Alberta. Yeah, I think she's she's become even though you've never met her and I never met her. I don't think I think she died by the time I was born. Um, you know, there are certain similarities. I mean, you both come from Chicago. You're both marrying into this rather yeah. odd, eccentric family. Um, it's not all straightforward, is it? I mean, no. I mean, it's, you it's, know, it's a lot of it is wonderful, but, um, and some of the people are wonderful. And all of the people yeah. are wonderful. But, but I, there, are, there are things that are different. Yeah. So I think, for me, being able to really embrace the history here, and I just want to show something that, because you know that I try to really... It, embrace it and get my head around it and make sure that when I'm telling people the stories of the painting of the first Earl of Sandwich that I don't mix it up with the painting of the fourth Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> and done. it's very easily done and who's who and making sure that I say the right name, like it's Basil Montague. Basil Montague. And not Basil Montague. And things like that, Boughton, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get things like that wrong. But... You know that I do love it. And so, and I, I, and I think for an American, especially seeing like the coat of arms and the crest everywhere is really, for, I, you know, I get into it. You grew up with it. So it's not that big of a deal for you. But for me, I'm always like, look at this coat of arms. Look at this, look at this crest. This is amazing. So Luke, for my birthday this year, found this. Um, and with the help of our cameraman behind the camera, found this and it did, I opened it up uh, a month ago and he, and can you just explain, and I had tears in my eyes because I couldn't believe it. This is, well, explain. Well, it's the coat it's, of arms. Well, it's, a, it's an 18th century print of our coat of arms. So back then there would have been lots of prints made of different families' coats of arms. This is actually the, the very finest one we've seen because I don't know if you can see from the camera, but the colors are so vivid. And if you think of the, the 18th century printing process, I mean, they might even have, in some cases, they used to actually paint over the top. That's possibly what's happened here. But it has in it um, the, coat of, the Montague family coat of arms, um, and you've got the, lo the lozenges, the three lozenges, which are the, the, uh, the Montague crest, um, and you've got, and then you've the, got a coronet on the top, which is the symbol. Well, you know this now. Yeah, you, I know this now. Which, so there's that. five um, balls, which is a symbol of an earl. So I know that. Um, and then interestingly, you've got our coat of, uh, not our coat of arms, our, our motto, our family motto, which I've always thought is particularly apt. Um, Can you post, say it in Latin first? He's really good at that. <laughs> post tot naufragia portum which translated means after so many shipwrecks port. And of course, that's particularly poignant for the very first Earl of Sandwich, who died in a terrible shipwreck when his boat was set fire 
in the Anglo-Dutch Wars, the Battle of Sol Bay in 1672, um, because, of course, he didn't reach port after his shipwreck. Um, and then later, members of the family, particularly the fourth Earl of Hall, had associations with the Navy and the sea and exploration and Captain Cook. Um, and we all love the sea as well. We, well, you we, do. Well, I do. That's true. You get rather seasick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, we've got our youngest son. Oh, good grief. What were we doing? We, um, we bought him a, an 18 foot no, yacht. No, no, no. We did not buy it for him. He, he bought, bought it, it himself. Okay. He saved up his money. Saved up his money. And he it's, bought it. it's, a, it's a boat that needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that there are no naufragia. There are no shipwrecks, shipwrecks. with Nestor. So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be trailing him in my boat whenever he sets out. Right. Because I'm not quite confident That's enough. That's just our yet. coffee machine. It's coffee machine making a gurgle. Yeah. So, um, so, so, well, yeah, so, 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 but I would quickly want to ask you a question. Yeah. Which is, um, when you first came here, I remember you coming down the drive and I hadn't really prepared you for, for Mapperton. Um, and that was quite a shock. But you also met my parents for the first time in, in quite extraordinary circumstances. I did. I did. So, I did. So, I... <laughs> So a couple of things about that evening was number one or that day, Luke telling me that just so you know, the house is kind of big. And I was like, that's okay. I come from America, the land of supersize. So no problem there. Right. But what he didn't prepare me for was not only was it rather large, but it was old. So I think there's a big difference in America. When we think of big, it's usually supersized and brand new. This was like supersized and 500 years old. So I had to really take all that in. Um, and remember when I first arrived, we didn't have all the plumbing that was done. So only one place in the other kitchen, small kitchen. It, could, it was always a bit of a risk whether the lavatory was going to work, work when you pulled the chain. The water, yeah. was I going to you know, end up being sick from it. And it was That's super... true, you couldn't drink the water at that stage. That's right, couldn't, couldn't drink, drink the water, water at the stage. And it was super cold. So, because we didn't oh, have the biomass yeah. boiler, that's why I love it why, here. Why did you marry me? I mean... It's astonishing. I'm not going to... No comment. Yeah. No comment. I'm not going to answer that. You put me on the spot. No, I'm just kidding. Because um, you're lovely. Um, so then we met his parents. I met his parents, your parents. Um, some boar around here had escaped. And so we were helping to track them because they can be very dangerous once they've escaped for other livestock. So I met your parents having found the boar, boars, and met your parents and we sort of bonded over... Over wild boar. Over wild boar. Uh, as one does mm -hmm. in the West Country of, uh, yeah, of England. Yeah, that's when... I, yeah. I didn't meet them here. I met them out in, there. In the woods. In the woods. Over a boar. Over a boar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You must have thought we were completely mad. I did. I did. And I thought, okay, you have a choice. You can either run away <laughs> now and never come back. Here's one of those whys <laughs> in your life. You're hitting a junction, and which right, way do you right, turn? Right, exactly. Yeah. So I stayed the course, and here we are. Yes, yes. So, so, um, so, so have we, but I mean, coming back to the, the motto, because I do find that interesting as a sort of backdrop to our, our lives, um, you know, we've got quite a lot of challenges here. We're, we're trying to do things um, in a way that will ensure that this place is able to be passed on to the next generation. Yeah. It's, there's no denying that running a place like this is immensely challenging in terms of the costs because we've got lots of properties that need endless repair. We've got lots of chapels, so pictures and furniture and tapestries that all need restoration and work. We've got roofs that leak. We've yeah, got animals that uh, escape. We've yeah, got all, all sorts of things that happen here. Um, <clears throat> all the time. And so we, I think what we've tried to do is to come up with things that we think are going to be part of the future here, both in terms of things that interest us, but also things that will generate income. So yoga retreats is, is one of those. Yep. Um, but these other ones we're wanting to cover in these Map and Live episodes. Oh. So, so coming up, we're going to be talking about things such as... 
the cafe opening up. So remember, we've just come out, well, we're just not, technically we're still in lockdown, but we're just easing out of lockdown now. So there's se several key dates. And one of the big key dates is April 12th, which we've opened the gardens up to the public now. We were allowed to do that a couple of weeks ago, but we weren't allowed to open up our cafe, which is in the coach house. And April 12th is like the big day. Our people going to come. We're allowed, people are allowed to sit outside so they can get a takeaway from the cafe and actually sit outside. And I think that's gonna be the big question is, are people going to come? And we basically have been closed for, well, closed and then open and then closed and then open for over a year now. And yeah. you just- and, and the staff haven't been here. So, yeah. the, so the cafe chef hasn't been cooking for a year. I, I hope he remembers. Yeah, I, I do too. I, well, I hope he remembers how to make my, my, my Julie's Live Well salad. Live well salad and things. So, so that's one of the big challenges, reopening. Um, but then we've also got other things that we've got going on. So we've got new opportunities with a project that I've just started around rewilding. And we're going to talk about this in a future episode. Um, but rewilding is this uh, movement, really, towards restoring the balance of nature and allowing ecosystems mm -hmm. to replenish. And it, and it really means thinking about the land in a slightly different way, not just for intensive agriculture, but also for wildlife. Um, and coupled with that, we've got um, this venture to do some glamping. So we've just been invest investing in bell tents, which Very are exciting. six meters wide, we're debating whether they can fit a double bed or a king size. What do you think? Double bed, king size I just bed? Think double bed's do you think fine. Double's enough? Yeah. It's a bit snug. People well, want more I know, space. but there's a lot of Americans probably watching this. They're probably going to know king, king size. King, go king for the size. king. So, <laughs> so, we, so maybe so, we should do a king. So we've got to sort that out. We've been working out the, um, the lavatory systems for them. Compost loos. Yeah. Do you know about compost loos? Yeah, yeah. But it, for me, it goes back to the Montague logo of after so many shipwrecks, the harbor. I kind of want to keep the shipwrecks at bay. So I kind of want to be like, no more shipwrecks. Let's save them before they become wrecked. Let's bring them into the harbor safely. Right? <laughs> right? I think we'd all rather be sitting happily in a harbor, anchored, having a cup of tea, yeah. than, than out in the kind of choppy waters of the mid-Atlantic. But I think some of that is a little bit inevitable because there are just things that are unpredictable. Yeah. For example, with our glamping operation, you know, we've got to get the council to approve. We've got to get the regulatory bodies to approve. Yeah, we've got to go to our neighbours. Don't even understand it. We've, like that. We, I mean, yeah, there are, there are so. All I know is that it has to be approved. There are so. <laughs> there are so many. In, in America, you don't have that. You can just basically you can just, just go be and like, do it. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, build it's, it's, it's not. Here, there's it's a not, lot of approval processes. That. That. And also, it's a historic house, and you're on. So for that, there has to be a lot of approval and the land, and yeah. So that's where it just gets. But then we, but we have got some help from other members of the family. Yes. So we've got my parents, um, Earl and Countess of Sandwich, are going to be doing some tours as part of Maps and Live. So they're going to be doing much more in-depth tours, really looking at individual pictures and items in the different rooms, things that they feel really um, passionate about. But Nesta as well. So our 14-year-old son, Nesta, is going to be doing a series on Maps and Live called Mapperton Safari, where he's going to introduce you to all of the furry beasts that we have. And the um, creepy crawly ones And as the well. creepy crawlies. So starting off looking at ones around Mapperton and then going out onto the estate to find slightly more exotic animals. Exactly. And I've even heard that there are white-tailed eagles flying over the estate now. So maybe, maybe he can spot one of spot those. Spot one of those. That would be exciting. Yeah, so we'll be doing lots of like live events and experiences. I'll be doing experiences, yoga, meditation in the garden where you can join me live. I also want to do somehow figure it out to do something with my, you know, my good old cold water swims. So there's such a range of things that we're hoping to do. Hopefully it's not too much. And we'd love to hear from people as to, as to the things that you are most interested in. Um, but obviously we'll be having weekly content coming out. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that we're going to do is to go and visit some of our neighbors in, mm -hmm. in other local historic houses uh, and see how they are running things because every, yeah. everybody's got their own particular way. Anyway, so we're, this was our first episode here for Mapperton Live, just to give you an update on all that we will be offering to every single one of you here. And we just want to say thank you so much for your support, for your generosity 
and of course um, for joining us on this, what we really feel is an incredible um, journey and it wouldn't be near as much fun without having you all with us. And hopefully not too many shipwrecks no. and lots of port. No, we're gonna, no, those shipwrecks are gonna be, right, coming into, coming into the harbor safe and sound, okay? Okay, bye everybody. I can't see a single car. No, no. I, I can't either. Where on earth yeah. is everybody? Well, let's hope that they come out when the cafe opens up.